Yesterday, Donald Trump held a smashing rally at Madison Square Garden. 20,000 people outside, reportedly tens of thousands of people outside, lining the streets, unable to get in. It was a historic moment. But of course, the Democrats are looking for an attack vector because this was a massive rally. And they're saying he's a Nazi. They're saying 85 years after Adolf Hitler supporters rallied at Madison Square Garden. Nazis. Okay, well, uh, seriously? Uh, yeah, no, no joke. Okay, well, the thing is the DNC held a rally there in 1992, and there have been uh, many a political leanings at Madison Square Garden. It's the stupidest thing ever. And yeah, the Nazis did rally there. There were American Nazis before World War II. And then the war happened, and then there was this big backlash. That's a whole other story. But of course, they're trying to find out anything they can to go after Donald Trump. Now, here's the best part. Okay, let's try this one on for size. Kamala Harris is calling Donald Trump Hitler over and over again to the point where voters are apparently suffering from Hitler fatigue. Seriously. And there are numerous Democrats saying this is a Nazi rally. I'm not even kidding. They're tweeting like this is a Nazi rally. But right now, the big story is, of course, Tony Hinchcliffe. You know him from Kill Tony. It's a very large podcast. It is currently number 99 in the world in terms of uh, podcast size and viewership. So he's a big comedian and uh, people really do love his show. The story now is that he made racist jokes about Latinos in Puerto Rico. What I love about this is because Donald Trump holds this rally that they say is literally a Nazi rally at Madison Square Garden. And then Tony Hinchcliffe makes a joke and they're like, quick, complain about insensitive jokes instead. OK, let me just let me get this straight. Trump is literally Hitler. OK, you are concerned that he's literally Hitler 2.0 point holding a Nazi rally. And the moment Tony Hitchcliffe makes a joke about Puerto Rico calling it a floating island of garbage, now the corporate press criticism is that. You see, you, you got to understand this. If we were to take them seriously and believe they're being honest, they're saying it is more worrisome that a comedian made off color jokes than it is that Donald Trump is Hitler and is holding, an, holding another Nazi rally. <laughs> You'd think like, You'd think this wouldn't register. Comedian says that Port he, he said Puerto Rico is a floating island of garbage. It's a joke. He was making a joke about the, the Pacific garbage patch in the, in the Atlantic gyre or whatever they're called. It's, it's comedy. OK, you know, that's it. You'd think this would take a back seat, and they wouldn't write headline news about Tony Hinchcliffe. They'd say, who cares about the joke? That was Hitler. You see, the point is they're not serious people. And it's funny, too, because AOC knows that Tony Hinchcliffe is very popular. And so she was watching the stream with Tim Waltz. And then he says the joke and she's like, oh, that's really that's really disappointing because I'm Puerto Rican. It's like, ah, you know, AOC's at a rock and hard place. She knows young people thought it was funny or just outright don't care. But you know what? Can I join in on the outrage, too? Can I be mad? Because I watched that Dave Chappelle guy. You know, he did that comedy special where he insulted Asian people. Yeah, he did. He like squinted his eyes and made fun of Asian people. Oh, I was aghast. How dare a comedian make jokes? Are you kidding me, dude? You know, I'm just we, we've got to move past this as a country. And a lot of people are saying this. We, we cannot be a whiny baby country that doesn't like jokes. The point of Tony Hinchcliffe's routine is to poke you. But you know what? There's a fair point. Some people are saying it's not wise to give Democrats any kind of attack vector right now when the election is close and we don't know what's going to happen. But you know what? I got to be honest. Everybody knows Donald Trump. He's, an, he's a known quantity, they say. If you really think this is going to move people over to voting for Kamala Harris, then uh, I don't think you were very confident in Donald Trump anyway. Because, you know, of all the things that matter to people, people know Donald Trump is crude. He's crass. He's got the mean tweets. And they're voting for him because they're concerned about, I don't know, mass illegal immigration, child trafficking, bad trade deals, World War Three. Just heavens me. Could you imagine some Puerto Rican guy living in America being like, I was really concerned about World War Three starting after Israel bombed Tehran. And then Tony Hinchcliffe <laughs> made a joke about the, the island that I come from. Now I'm going to vote for Kamala Harris. Yeah, I, I, I really I, I don't. I just I. I I mean, look, there's probably some people that don't care about anything and they're like, OK, I'll vote Trump. Whoa, why is he insulting me? But I really doubt the number is significant. Let's go through the news and take a look at the current trends, because I got to be honest, Donald Trump is still winning.
in the Poly Market Pulse. Before we get started, head over to castbrew.com. Buy Cast Brew Coffee. It's the best coffee. It's our coffee. And when you buy it, not only will you be happy that you have the best coffee ever, but you'll be supporting our work. Become a member at timcast.com. Click join us. We get a Discord server full of like-minded individuals you can hang out with. So if you're looking for people to talk to about what you think and what you want to express, TimCast.com, join the Discord server. Let's, uh, let's grab this story from NBC News. As Trump courts their vote, comedian at his rally makes racist jokes about Latinos and Puerto Rico. Comedian Tony Hinchcliffe made crude jokes about Latinos having babies and called Puerto Rico a floating island of garbage, drawing a rebuke from several Republicans. Well, you know, look, I got to tell you, my friends, Republicans are not known for their relaxed demeanor and edge when it comes to cultural uh, issues. No, Republicans are actually known to be more orderly and stodgy and eh, wearing suits all the time. You know what I mean? You got to chill out. Well, you got Tony Hinchcliffe here. He's wearing a suit. I wouldn't wear a suit. I went to the White House and I didn't wear a suit. And people were like, how dare you, Tim, not wear a suit and wear that beanie in the White House? You are the only one. I'm like, indeed I am. Because what we're talking about right now is, yes, I know and respect the decorum. I do. Me, that's not me. I'm not going to pretend that it is. There are a lot of people on the right that do want that stodginess that will always be stodgy. But my friends, there is right now an alliance between former Democrats, independents and the Republican Party. And that is a populist movement, which means Tony Hinchcliffe, Hinchcliffe is popular among middle of the road people like myself. And uh, this kind of thing I like. Oh, no, you're going to cry about it. OK, let me just stress this again. Dave Chappelle made fun of Asian people for which I am partly. And I laughed at that because I understand a joke, stereotypes, jokes, we're ribbing on each other. If I had a friend who was made a crack about Asians being good at math, I would just laugh. And then I might make a joke about whatever it is they do at some point, And we're friends. We don't care. This stuff rolls. It's, it's, it's silly. It's just so silly. Here we go. Should I play? Should I, can we play the clip here? Let's, uh, here we go. In Texas, stuff is really, really crazy. We're right there by a wide open border. Where are my proud Latinos at tonight? You guys see what I mean? It's wide open. There's so <laughs> many of them. It's absolutely incredible. That was good. Believe it or not, people, I welcome migrants to the United States of America with open arms. And by open arms, I mean like this. <laughs> go back <laughs> it's wild and these latinos they love oh so for that you, you couldn't see it but for those who are just listening he holds up his hands wide but as a stop and waves and says go back <laughs> go back okay we get the point you guys uh, uh kill tony is a fantastic show tony hinchcliffe is, is very funny so uh here's here's a uh, aaron rugenberg Rugenberg, he's a dad, an organizer, and lawyer. He says, this is a Nazi rally. They're Nazis, good God. That should mean something. It means, sir, that you are a liar. No one takes you seriously. We are so over this. Look at this from the post millennial. Undecided voters lean Trump after suffering from Hitler rhetoric fatigue. Fatigue, I say. Dude, you have an opportunity. You know what? They had an opportunity to actually come out on the issues, but their brains are jello. So what do I, what, what, what can you expect? Okay, here's here's AOC. Let's uh, let, let's I'm sorry. I'm going to make you listen to this. But, you know, here you go. This was not this was a hate rally. Mm -hmm. This was not just a presidential rally. This was also not just a campaign rally. I think it's very important for people to understand that these are mini January 6 rallies. <laughs> these are mini Stop the Steal rallies. These are rallies to prime an electorate into rejecting the results of an election if it doesn't go the way that they want. Because Donald Trump and... Ma'am, do you hear yourself? You're out of arguments. This is it, okay? Democrats have run out of arguments. They're like... Well, he's right. The border's busted. Our World War Three is uh, you know, we're, we're, we're spiraling towards it. Uh, the economy's not good. Crime actually is up. They've got nothing left to propose. Donald Trump has a fairly moderate position on a lot of things. And they're like, what can we offer people? Are you going to come out and be like, Trump is wrong. We should have the border open. They're, people won't vote for you. And you know it. Uh, World War Three is actually a good thing. And they're not going to vote for you. This is the rock and hard place for the Democratic Party. They can't counter Trump's offers to the American American people. They can't justify why everything's bad under Kamala Harris and why people should vote for her again. So it's just that Trump's Hitler. That entire cadre of people up on that stage, Stephen Miller, etc. 
do not respect the law of the United States of America. And they either want to win this election or they are using rhetoric of taking it by force. Mm -hmm. That is what this that is what they mean. And that's what they're doing when they are inciting <clears throat> violence and hatred against <laughs> Latinos, against black Americans, against Americans who don't have children against. I mean, we're, you have J.D. Vance literally talking about watering down people's right to vote depending on if they can viably carry a child or not. We have to understand how unhinged this campaign has gotten. And the only reason that the rhetoric has gotten this far is precisely because they are trying to prime the kind of froth that led up to the January 6th attack. Uh, can I just point out, this is, this is where the Democrats are. Lots of words saying almost nothing. Everything she just said could have been said in five seconds. I think... Trump and his supporters at this rally are a threat and want violence and force to seize power. Thank you. That's all I have to say, because she's she, she keeps talking. She keeps talking. This is what they keep doing. They keep saying words that don't mean anything. They just keep going in circles where they talk and they're talking about things where they're like, you know, this is what I'm talking about. And it's important that we talk about it because talking about it's a very important thing. And you got to talk about it. If you don't talk about it, we're not talking about it. And talking about it is what we got to do. And you're like, I get it. This is it. They have nothing. Look at this in the Daily News. They're down, but not out. Yankees have it. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't care about baseball. Racist rally <laughs> below the fold. Speakers supporting Trump at MSG event insult Puerto Ricans, blacks, Jews and Harris. Uh huh. Listen, it's called jokes, you know, but some people are pointing out maybe maybe you shouldn't have a comedian doing this kind of off color comedy at a political rally. But, you know, I don't know that I care all that much, to be completely honest. Now, Kamala Harris issued a statement, which I'm not going to play because it's long winded and says nothing. I will just read for you the succinct thing, because what I love about X is that with a limited number of characters, Kamala Harris gets to the point much quicker. Throughout my career, I've always fought for the people of Puerto Rico. Every chance he got, Donald Trump abandoned and insulted them. As president, I will invest in Puerto Rico's future so that Puerto Ricans cannot just get by, but get ahead. OK, well, sure, they don't like Tony Hinchcliffe. Mike Cernovich says, I would not have had a comedian known for pushing buttons, headlining a tightly contested political event where early voting has begun. But when you're playing offense 24 seven, you're bound to cross some lines. It happens, has happened. And key is driving new news tomorrow, which, of course, this is the, the big story of the morning with all the headlines. How dare Tony Hinchcliffe say such a thing? But of course, by tonight, I assure you, the story will be something else. We are seven days out, my friends, seven days. The election is currently underway. It's been underway for several weeks now. Election day, which is the real day, is just uh, about a week. I said just about because it's like seven days and 20 hours or whatever. I don't know. What time is it? Seven days and seven, 16 hours, 15 hours. There you go. Something like that. Well, I don't know, but it's depending on when you're watching this anyway. So, yeah. Tony Hinchcliffe has responded to AOC's uh, hilarious failure of a response herself. Kamala HQ says, Governor Waltz and AOC react to this clip. When you, ha when, you, when you have some a-hole calling Puerto Rico floating garbage, know that's what they think about you. It's what they think about anyone who makes less money than them. I want every Puerto Rican in Philadelphia and reading and blah, blah, blah. Okay, we get it. They're trying to win swing voters. Tony Hinchcliffe says, these people have no sense of humor. Wild that a vice presidential candidate would take time out of his busy schedule to analyze a joke taken out of context to make it seem racist. I love Puerto Rico and vacation there. I made fun of everyone. Watch the whole set. I'm a comedian, Tim. Might be time to change your tampon. <clears throat> I mean, Cernovich makes a good point. Maybe you don't want to uh, have a, you know, a, a, a shocking comedian headlining your event. And uh, if if if. I don't know that I would say things like that if I mean, seriously, if I was going to do a political rally, I did a, a, polit a small political event in uh, Newtown, PA. They were looking for speakers. Jack Posobiec and I were there. And uh, I basically just told the story of what made me support Donald Trump and where I'm at uh, currently. I didn't make any weird uh, off color jokes or anything like that. But Tony Hinchcliffe is a comedian. And if asked to do it, this is what he does. He's funny. I thought his set was funny. I welcome to make fun of me and literally everything that makes up who I am. That is, you've got some German and some British and some Irish and Korean and Japanese. Look at that. Tony, by all means, I don't care. You make a joke, I'm going to laugh. I'm going to laugh because that's what we do. We get past these things by joking and having fun. Tony Hinchcliffe calls out Hillary Clinton for saying most anti-war president Trump is holding a Nazi rally at Madison Square Garden. 
He says, the most anti-war president in my lifetime, she calls him Hitler. Let me remind you, Hillary, it was your husband who shot innocent people, or as he called them interns. He then said, and by the way, if I commit suicide in three days, I didn't. I thought it was funny. I, thought, I think the guy's funny. Uh, <laughs> look at this. DNC projects message tr- uh, tying Trump to Hitler on Madison Square Garden rally. Just, you know what? I just please keep doing this, Democrats. Please, for the love of, just don't stop. Don't stop. Just keep, just keep going. Matt Walsh says, I hope everyone appreciates the masterful strategy here. Trump is goading the Dems into spending their final week crying about jokes. They are absolutely taking the bait. They can't help themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Let, 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 let me tell you. There are some people in the Republican Party, the Republican Party of uh, Puerto Rico, they got offended by it. They were like, oh, I dare I say, uh, how dare you? Um, yeah, but uh, Matt Walsh is correct. I saw some liberals highlighting statements from Republicans that are condemning what Tony Hinchcliffe said, saying, listen, this is not appropriate. We're a political rally. We're trying to win votes. Don't do this, et cetera, et cetera. There are some statements where they're like, we reject these comments and jokes. They are not right. Puerto Rico is beautiful and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but, you know, Matt Walsh makes a point. While I can certainly argue and entertain, perhaps, perhaps it will be bad for Republicans. I don't know. I kind of think most of voting for Trump aren't going to get mad about an off-color joke. Because like I said, Trump's a known quantity. But I also think it's fair to say, if this joke makes Democrats chase after Hitler rhetoric over and over and over again, then it is an advantage for Donald Trump. That's just a reality, right? And I'm not trying to cope. Let's just, let's just stop right here and say, okay, let's say Trump loses a point or two from, uh, uh, among Latino voters and Puerto Rican voters because of what Tony Hinchcliffe said. I doubt it, but let's just say he does. Okay, fine. There's also the reality that Kamala needs to get on point with her with her policy messaging, and she has not done it. So if she's going to come out and be like, I think it's racist and Trump is Hitler, people are going to say, I don't know what that means. I don't know how that gets the cost of my groceries down. OK, it does throw them off base. When Kamala debated Donald Trump, everybody said that she won the debate. And I said, yeah, actually, I think you could you could argue that. But technically, Trump won. What I mean is. Kamala was more composed, riled Trump up, got him all flustered. She said people were leaving his rallies. Nobody leaves my rallies. And it was like, what, what is this? Who's articulating anything? Here's the problem. It's Trump's to lose. People believe Trump is better on the economy and immigration. Those are the key issues. When Kamala Harris goes up on the debate stage and, the, and just says Trump's got a thin, thin skin and he's a loser and Trump loses it, people just go, huh? Kamala, that was the only opportunity she had to to tell people, these are my plans. And then she does this town hall on CNN and oof, very bad. Now we've got AOC. She's like, I do not want to do four more years of resistance nonsense under, under Donald Trump. Even AOC knows. Okay, like, good God. Do we remember what it was like waking up every day and there was some ish going on? She knows. AOC knows how cringe the resistance is under Donald Trump's first term. They were all like, we're resistance and Trump is Hitler. She's like, I don't want to do that again. She's not just saying Trump, Trump has to lose because we can't go through that. She's saying even if Trump wins, we can't do it. She's signaling to people who are Hitler fatigued enough. I love this from Daily Beast. Morning Joe Crew asks after racist Trump MSG rally, how did we get here? You people are psychopaths. You are you live in some crackpot reality. Look, Jenk Uger put out this tweet where he's like, both sides are so confident they're going to win. There are state level polls that say good things about Kamala Harris. There are national level polls that say good things about Kamala Harris. I don't care about singular polls. I care about the, the plurality of factors. That is poly market suggesting Trump victory, betting markets in aggregate suggest a Trump victory, a Republican victory, and Trump is winning at the national level. Here we go. 2024 national Trump is up 0.1. That is indicative of a Donald Trump victory. Now we look, in 2020, RCP's aggregate had Biden at 7.5 points up on Donald Trump. Today, Trump is winning. In the battlegrounds, Trump is winning, still with just about one point ahead in aggregate among all battleground states. In PA, he is up a half point. Now, that could be within the margin of error. We really don't know. But again, you go back in time and Biden was way up. The bias favors Democrats. I don't know what's going to happen. I think it's Trump's to lose. The forecast models are, are pointless because forecasts change all the time and they're not telling you anything. It's 50 50. What does that mean for me? What we can say is, what is the sentiment of the media and the public and that the 
the polls give you media sentiment. They think Trump is winning. But what about and I I think it's fair to say, too, you know, you can weigh all the different polls differently, but the latest polls have Harris up a point. So who knows? Who knows? But the betting market suggests the wisdom of the crowds. What regular people think is going to happen doesn't mean Trump wins by 60 points. It just means Trump is likely to win. But in poly market, following the uh, the racist MSG rally, Trump's now at 66.1. He's gone up. People are still betting more and more on him to win. Why? Listen, lady, AOC, Hillary, Kamala, undecided voters are suffering from Hitler fatigue. At a certain point, you call Trump Hitler. I'm like, I just want it to stop. I want these people to go away forever. And I'll give you this warning, Democrats. In 2020, there were a lot of regular people who didn't vote for Donald Trump. And they believed that Donald Trump was the cause of all of this insanity. The craziness in movies, the culture war. Why won't it stop? Just stop. I want to watch the World Series, they'd say. I want to watch the Super Bowl. And well, Trump was president. And so they said, if I vote for Joe Biden, it's a vote for normalcy. That's what they were saying. And they were wrong. And we warned them. but They were wrong. Donald Trump is a symptom of, not the creator of, the culture war problems that we're seeing today. Culture war has been going on since beginning of 2010. You can go back to 2007, actually, when it started to bubble up. The insanity that we are seeing is it's a cultural phenomenon that I believe is largely due to big tech and generational issues in education. There's a lot to it. But now I think many of these undecided voters are learning. Trump hasn't been president for four years and it never stopped. The, the banshee screeching of Democrats bashing their faces on the wall while screaming Hitler over and over and over again never stopped. And it's not going to until these people are removed from power. They need to be told to shut up. Stop screaming like a baby. You know what this reminds me of? It's like, Here's, here's how, I, how I often describe it. You see a lady walking with two kids. One kid is covered in ice cream. The other kid is looking all clean cut and wonderful. And what happens is, there's a couple ways I do this story, but people go, look at that kid covered in ice cream. You know, he's gross. You know what? I don't want that. I want the clean cut kid. Little did they realize it's because the clean cut kid threw ice cream at the other kid. You get it? It's like, The Democrats are the ones lobbing the meatballs and screaming and bashing their face. And then everyone's like, if we vote Trump out, the Democrats will stop. Really? The banshee screeching hasn't stopped at all. Kamala Harris literally said on Fox News that the reason people think the country is heading the wrong direction is because Donald Trump is running for office. Huh? The country is in the wrong direction because Trump says he wants to be president. What? How is it? What? You're the vice president. You, you, you voted on 33 uh, Democrat bills breaking the tie. Everything this country is doing is because of you. But certainly, we have to get to that point now where I believe we are. Regular people are just saying, you know what, man? It's time to punish the Democrats because they can't say anything other than Hitler over and over and over again while bashing their faces on the table. It's just enough. Enough, please. I personally would like it all to stop. I want a secure border. I want a de-escalation of war. I want a better economy. Donald Trump offers those things. So if you're going to come out and scream because Tony Hinchcliffe made a joke, uh, people like Dave Chappelle and they like Tony Hinchcliffe. They're jokes. It's time to tell these people who can't take a joke to sit down and shut up. I'll wrap it up there, my friends. Smash that like button. Share the show with everyone you know. Become a member at TimCast.com. You can follow me on X and Instagram at TimCast. Thank you all so much for hanging out. We have another segment coming up at 1 p.m., and we will see you all then.